Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Tom Esselman. I'm the executive director for PCs for People in Kansas City. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our WISP initiative. But before I do, I just want to make sure we establish a perspective here. Uh, state legislators, uh, Aaron, uh, Casey Digital Drive, Francella, Next Century City Broadband advocates, a lot of friends, colleagues. We have a really, really unique opportunity to make history. And I'm not I'm not saying this just to exaggerate. We can make history again. Because think about it, 10 years ago, this area, Greater Kansas City uh, region, we made history, right? Kansas City, Kansas and Kansas City, Missouri were the first cities in the United States to get selected by Google Fiber for gigabit speed broadband infrastructure. Kansas City Digital Drive was formed as a result of that. PCs for People Kansas City was formed. We were known as Connecting for Good at that time. And Connecting for Good became this charming little nonprofit because we believed in even low power, low speed mesh networks were, were there to provide some internet, which was better than no internet for low income communities, okay? 10 years later, Right now, we have a very unique opportunity, and that's what I want to focus on. That's kind of why I want to talk to you about PCs for People's WISP initiative, because I think it's a larger context of why the greater Kansas City region is so significant in this state broadband funding allocation set of decisions that's going to come up. So that's what I want to do. That's the backdrop. And hopefully in the process, you'll see and understand better how we as a practitioner do leverage federal funding so far and what it's gonna mean going forward, okay? And if, if I don't do that, please ask me more questions. So um, the first thing here, I don't wanna drone on about what we all believe in, the importance of connectivity. Um, but what I do want to make you aware of is that right as COVID was about to start, there was a new layer of broadband spectrum that the FCC opened up, which had previously only been made available to the military. And that was because we didn't have enough spectrum available to provide the high speed capacity that this country needed. And I'm fortunate enough, having evolved from Connecting for Good, which was a small five person nonprofit with no budget, to PCs for People, which now operates in nine cities and it takes advantage of its scale and a lot of really smart people, we got in line and we got a license for that CBRS spectrum. That's why now today we are licensed by the FCC as an internet service provider. Um, we had to do it. We were providing computers through, we do electronic e-waste recycling to support our mission. So we were providing computers, we were providing hotspots, we we're providing digital literacy training. But as soon as COVID hit, it was obvious hotspots weren't sufficient unless you were just one person with one device. All right. And so we knew as part of our mission, we were committed to doing more to provide internet so that our commitment to the three-legged stool could really be genuine. Because if all we were doing was hotspots, we were, we were going to be missing the mark on internet connectivity. So the value proposition is this. In addition to, you know, this three-legged stool, we, we've gone through the whole process of saying, if we can't get someone that's a low-income household connected to something that meets their needs, we're not doing our mission as a nonprofit. And even more so by virtue of the fact that Way back in, what was it, 2015, we became part of the Kansas City Coalition for Digital Inclusion. So along with the Kansas City Public Library and Urban Tech and Kansas City Digital Drive in the city, we were committed to working with all the partners, George, Marvin, uh, Jeff, everybody, you know, the, the providers, the practitioners, that's what our mission is all about. So, so going through the internet, um, solution that we've come up with, we're, we're trying to make sure that we check off all the boxes. We're only focusing on communities that lack affordable infrastructure. Our program is designed to first and foremost get you enrolled in ACP so that your cost is zero. But as many of you may know, if we just go in and say, sign up for our free internet, 
the trust factor is about zero. But if we go in and say, we actually have a $15 a month internet program, but we'll, when you understand what ACP is, you'll understand you only pay zero for it. So there's a lot greater trust in knowing it's a $15 a month plan. But, um, but if you take advantage of the subsidy that's available, you won't have to pay anything for it. High speed. The minimum speed that we provide in our program is 5010. That's the minimum. Um, and we're, we're now, we're, we're kind of throttling between 4G and 5G now so that we can go 100 symmetrical to be uh, eligible for ARPA, which I'll show you in just a second. But what PCs for People has done that's so unique, I believe, is take this financially sustainable model. We believe in what Francella said. It's not just the economic case for those we serve, but it's the economic case for how we stay in business. We have to have a sustainable model. So we start with e-waste recycling and we turn that into how we're able to refurbish and distribute computers and provide impact to families. Um, when you talk about impact, by the way, we've distributed over 140,000 computers since we started in 2008. And I, we also keep data on them. Average um, uh, annual household income is less than $15,000 for the families we serve. 60% of our customers have never owned a computer. And guess what? 58% of them are unemployed when they come to us. So it's an interesting correlation. And the average annual household income increases by an average of 15% for the families that we serve. How do we know that? You have to update your eligibility documents every year. And we have it. We are always asking them what your average, um, what your ha household income was as it progresses. So it's really been interesting for us to see the power of the uh, impact of getting connected to not just internet, but the computers in the internet and the training together. So the last slide I'm gonna share with you is that, you know, why is working with a nonprofit like PCs for People um, a viable alternative to working with the low cost options provided by other ISPs. Um, as the slide says, and you'll have to forgive me, the, I took three slides out of a 72 slide presentation. So uh, just trying to do something that you know, would hit the mark for what we're talking about here today. Um, you know, we're not just trying to fill holes in the map. Uh, I like that. Um, we only focus on communities that need it. Here in the Kansas City area, we got funded by the Kauffman Foundation, the Sunderland Foundation, W.T. Kemper Foundation, and others about a year ago. And we've currently installed in five housing authority properties so far, three on the Kansas side, two on the Missouri side. And we have another six that we're in the process of completing before the end of September this year. Um, our, um, it's a combination in high rise, MDUs, multiple dwelling units, we're trying to do wired to the apartment, but we're also able to put uh, LTE towers on the roof and we can broadcast up to about three quarters of a mile around the surrounding neighborhoods. And we're able to help residents connect wirelessly with a modem that gives them a secure network with a secure SSD and, and login and password. So that's the way we go about doing it. Although to be honest with you, enrollment requires a lot of hand-holding. We're spending the majority of our time and effort doing events where we're just there to get to know the residents. Because, you know, uh, and, and George, we've talked about this. Our philosophy is doing with, not doing for. Um, you know, Aaron and others have talked about meaningful use cases. Um, the only way you can come up with a meaningful use case is to get to know somebody. Uh, and then when you get to know them, you can break down any fears that they might have. Um, we, we obviously capture a lot of data and we make sure that everything that we do can be reported back. So from a funding perspective, um, you know, the way we've been able to manage um, our work in the last year, if you want to know about federal funding, um, is because of the nature of the work we've done, we got approved pretty much right away as a provider of the affordable connectivity program. It was initially the emergency broadband benefit. Um, but our income eligibility criteria exactly match um, what the um, uh, national uh, lifeline income 
eligibility criteria are so that our systems are now synced so that for every ACP fulfillment we do, we get a direct reimbursement from the FCC. So that's how we're set up right now. And that's just the, I think the significance of the role that PCs for People can play within the region. But what we do matters not even this much if we're not linking with community partners, as I've mentioned, like the Housing Authority, um, Westside Housing for Posada del Sol and other areas where we've been doing work, as well as Literacy KC and, um, and the things that um, um, Ina has talked about with Urban Tech and others. So we're really just beginning to do it. But what I like is that 10 years after we originally made history and for Connecting for Good, it was just providing some internet that's better than none. Um, I love the, the phrase that Next Century Cities uses, which is today with, with solutions like this and all of us collectively raising our voices, uh, we're looking at high-speed broadband for everyone in the greater Kansas City region. And that's our goal. And, and I think it's an opportunity too good to be left aside by this funding initiative that we're facing right now. So um, thank you for listening to me and I, I'd love to take any questions.